Now we're going to go through Harry's coronary detection. So in the previous video, we looked at how to see um, edges in the X and the Y axis. Now we're going to look at an algorithm that is a little bit more efficient and that can see a flat area in the image. It can see also an edge, but it also detects corners. Okay, so let's get to it. Okay. So the algorithm here is corner detection. What it basically does is that you put a frame over your image. So let's say that this triangular shape is inside of an image. And you then have a window which you can move around in the image. Right? If you move the window in here, it will look at the differences from the original point to the slightly moved point. And if you are inside of the triangle, you won't have any differences, right? Because the pixels are basically the same. However, if you move it here, along the axis there will not be any change, but there will be a change along the x-axis, for example. So here you can see that you have an edge. If you are in a corner, you will have changes in all of the different directions. And that's basically how the Harris corner detection understands if it is in a flat area, on an edge, or if it's in a corner. And we have an, a little equation for that. So we have U, which is the window's displacement in the X direction. And we have V, which is the windows, window displacement in the Y direction. And we look for every X and Y in the whole image, right? So W will be the window, the position, basically, of X and Y. Okay, so we have this equation. And this will be the intensity uh, of the moved window and this will be the intensity of the original image. So the intensity, you see the difference here, uh, and you use the window function to move the window around, basically. However, this equation will be really time-consuming to calculate. So what you do instead in the Harris corner detection is that you build an approximation of this function. So if you remember from calculus, you can do this by using a Taylor series. So you create an estimate of a function. Um, well, you, you can expand it for, for a very long uh, series, which will give you a more accurate approximation of the function. But we will just do it basically uh, of, with the first step approximation. Now we can rewrite it in a matrix form. So what we did is we did the first uh, Taylor expansion and we then expanded the square from this. And then we have to uh, add u and v again so we can make the expression squared. Okay, so what is interesting with this now? What we would like to get from this is the eigenvalues of our matrix basically. And why do we want to have that? Because we have... I can illustrate it with an image, actually. Okay, so we, we can get uh, two, um, um, two lambdas out here uh, from our function, which is the eigenvalues. And if lambda 1 is very big, but lambda 2 will be very small, we know that we will have an edge here. And if lambda 2 is big and lambda 1 is small, we will also have an edge here. However, if both of them are big, there will be a corner. And if both of them are small, it will just be a flat area. 
So that's why we want to calculate that. Um, another measure that I've seen that people do is GORE classifier. So you, you have this form, this matrix form, and we can call it M. So this we will call M. And when we want to calculate R, we will use the determinant of our matrix M minus K, which is a constant of the trace of the matrix M squared. So, to be clear, M is our matrix The determinant of M is basically lambda 1 times lambda 2. The trace of M equals lambda 1 plus lambda 2. Um, and then R is basically just a score. And K, it's a constant. And we usually set it between 0 0.04 to 0 0.06. And what I showed you before with the lambdas, that's more like an understanding of the directions of when we move the window. That if it's big in both directions, we will have a corner. If it's in just one direction, it's an edge, and if there's no big change, there's basically a flat area. But to be a little bit more exact, we can use the R value. So we can have when R is almost zero, when R is much less than zero, and we have another place where R is much bigger than zero. So when we have that R is almost zero, then we know we have a flat area. When R is much less than zero, we know we have an edge. And when R is much bigger than zero, we know we have a corner. So this is like what you want to get from first getting the, the function and make an approximation of the function so it's easier to calculate. Then we calculate our values to also understand if it's flat, if it's an edge or if it's a corner. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, comment below if you have any questions and uh, give it uh, a like uh, and don't forget to subscribe down here uh, if you like the videos.